I'm gonna go. What do you say about that? Let's go. So we're live. We are live. We are. We're talking live about this is this is our third Western movie. Our third. Western weeks continue. They continue. Silverado, this was a big return to form for the, the Western genre. There hadn't been a Western. I mean, Clint Eastwood had done things like Pale Rider, but not a big, brash, Hollywood epic production like this. Right. Well, this we was should... sort of a re reinvigoration of the Western genre. Yes. So let's talk about it when we actually start the show. Oh, really? We're not supposed to talk. What about this preamble? People like to hear us talk. Yeah, but we don't usually t start talking about the movie. <laughs> really? We don't? Well, what do we do? We talk about you, the ace? <laughs> do we talk about how I just got shipping notices for our merch? Awesome. We're going to get our shirts. We can wear them together. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, I guess we're going to start the show then. We'll get we'll get all real about it now. Here comes your theme song that you wrote yourself. Uh oh <laughs> You wrote and performed it yourself. You created this music. Pretty cool. Right? Yeah. You don't seem very energetic about this Western show. <laughs> well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your master of fun and one. But you're not here to see me. You're here to see this lovely creature, and you do look exceedingly lovely tonight, my well, dear. thank you. Nice earrings, by the way. Well, thanks. It's, it's so, yeah, very nice. Uh, who are you? I am Elizabeth Gwendolyn Bell, the ace, the arbiter of cinematic excellence, and the, the enchantress, enchantress of, of entertainment. entertainment. Wow, so how are you feeling so far about Western Week, Western Weeks? I love Westerns, so I'm feeling happy. I mean, now we've, we've jumped from My Darling Clementine, which was 46, to Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, which is 40, uh, 66, 67. Right. And then now we're 1985, yes. after the waning of the Western genre. Uh-huh. You know, after sort of the wild bunch. I mean, there was McCabe and Mrs. Miller and Butch Cassidy and the Sun. I, you know. The, the Western genre has always been here, but this was sort of a big return to Hollywood form to the Western. It was. You don't seem convinced. I was distracted by the eyeballs. Distracted by the eyeballs. <laughs> well, there's lots of eyeballs. Okay. <laughs> well, you know what we need before we talk about this? We need, we need wine. booze. we got to booze it up, everybody. Pour them if you got them. We've got Frey again. Uh, is this an organic red blend? It is. This is Frey. It's an organic red blend. And where is this from? Whole Foods. Oh, this is a Whole Foods special. <laughs> Not a Trader Joe's special? Not that one. Oh, wow. Well, here, here you go. Thank now, you. Now, <clears throat> uh, all right. So this film came out right after I graduated from high school. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and I saw it opening night at the Cinerama in Seattle. It's not a dome, but it's still one of my favorite theaters in Seattle. And um, uh, very, very cool. And it followed Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote and directed this. Well, he co-wrote and directed this. He wrote Empire Strikes Back. He wrote Raiders of the Lost Ark. He had directed Body Heat and The Big Chill. Mm -hmm. And Body Heat was a, a modern take on film noir. Big Chill was sort of his college memoirs kind of a thing. Well, not college memoirs, but memoirs of remembrance of college by getting very autobiographical either way. Love the Big Chill. But then this was his third film where he directed it and uh, wrote it with either his brother or his son. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I think his brother, maybe. And uh, big widescreen studio epic coming from Columbia. Yeah. So cheers to that. Cheers. Salud. Mm. We've had Frey before, but delightful. Really enjoying. I enjoy I like the Frey. This wine. <clears throat> so what's interesting about this film was was the Western genre was a mainstay of American cinema for a very long time. Yes. In the mid '80s, the blockbuster film. I mean, they tried to make like the the adventures of of they they tried to make a young Lone Ranger movie. With Clinton Spilsbury as a Lone Ranger, didn't really do well. Mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood was still making westerns. You know, he had done his '70s westerns like High Plains Drifter and The Outlaw Josie Wales, and then I think he'd made Pale Rider before this had come out. But he was sort of holding on, clinging on to the western. But the western genre was not; it had sort of fallen yeah, out I mean, of when favor. I, when I think westerns, I think Clint Eastwood. <laughs> yeah, I mean this. This is the same summer Back to the Future came out. Wow. So, yeah, you think West is clear, but you don't think John Wayne? 
I mean, that was... I, I did watch John Wayne uh, westerns, but I feel like... I feel like I watched uh, Clint Eastwood more probably because his films came out when I was very Yeah, young. you saw them. Yeah, they and were... I they, saw them as they... And shame. they aired them on TV a lot and everything. Yeah. But they were kind of... The thing about Clint Eastwood westerns were... Like, westerns always had a hero. Yeah. You know, like Gary Cooper, John Wayne. But Clint Eastwood was... was I think Clint Eastwood's Clint Eastwood-ness sort of overshadowed the westerns he made later. The movies were more about Clint Eastwood than they were about the westerns themselves. <laughs> they were. You know, which is fine. But I was a fan, so I didn't... Yeah, you know, of course. To me, I wasn't judging it that way. I just really liked... I liked him, and I like. I was a kid, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And and what, what's... And he int- made one with an orangutan. Well, th- those aren't really westerns, though. I know. Every which way you can, and every <laughs> every which way but loose, and any, and any which way you can. With, with Clyde. Clyde. I like those movies. I did, too. I saw those movies in the theater. I mean, I, I you know, when they came out, I, I, I liked... I liked those movies. Oh, uh-huh, me too. You know, and, and Clint Eastwood was directing most of the time then. I mean, it's interesting because in 82, I think it was 82, he made Firefox, which was kind of a sci-fi movie where he stole a sophisticated Russian jet. Oh, I don't think I've seen that. And it's 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 a little lethargically paced. Uh. But I liked it when it came out. I mean, I thought it was cool. But so when this was coming out, like, I was not excited for the Western genre. But this is very much a movie of its time as well as its genre. Yeah. This is such an 80s it is. movie. It is such an 80s movie. It's such an 80s movie. It's got Bruce Broughton's beautiful but overbearing score. Oh my goodness. Uh, by the end, I was like, can, can we get a breather, a little break from the music? It was like nonstop score over everything. Well, I mean, remember. And plus, it was like upbeat score when it should have just been more mellow. I don't know. The score really bothered me. It's a great score, though. It is a great score, but, but it's it was a little overbearing, overwhelming, and and loud, and there was never a break from it. Mm. I have to say, one of the great strengths of this movie is the cast. The cast is amazing. This movie is is I mean, Kevin Klein coming back from he was he was basically Lawrence Kasdan's stand-in in the Big Chill, coming back and playing Payton. And what I do love about this movie is. It kind of combines the Western movie and sort of the Men on the Mission movie in that you've got these these characters. The movie yeah. opens with Emmett, <clears throat> Scott Glenn, who I love. Uh, you know, he's in. You don't. You don't know. You don't know what's going on. You're in a ca- mountain cabin somewhere. Yes. Mm-hmm. And Scott Glenn is Emmett uh, is being set upon by three, three or four. I don't think we see exactly how many yeah we don't see exactly but, some but he's being attacked he's being attacked in a cabin yeah and we see he is a very deft he, he knows how to use his weapons yeah i mean they're like on the roof of the cabin and they're shooting down at him and he's able to create uh the make the roof unstable so that it crashes down and he kills the guy but one or two get away yeah, one or no, no, no. They, he kills everybody. He kills everybody. Yeah. Okay. What gets away are two horses. Two horses, but one is left behind. One is left behind, and the he the beautiful um, the Pinto. Pinto. And he and you see they have a two diamonds. There's a symbol. Yeah. So he's they're been branded. branded. And so <clears throat> Scott Glenn then takes one of these Pintos and starts riding away. And you hear the score. You see the 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 west western milieu, the beautiful landscapes. Yeah. Not quite Monument Valley, but mm-hmm. definitely. The rolling mountains and everything, and Emmett comes across, Payton comes across Kevin Klein in his underwear. Yes, in, in the middle underwear. of the desert, you know, in, a, in, in not a <laughs> desert but a sand, yeah, kind of a yeah, desert, desert desert environment. Yeah, seemingly waiting to die. He was just laying with his head on a rock. Laying with his head on a I rock. Mean, he could have been dead. He 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 could have been dead, but he's but ace. he wasn't. And Emmett sort of rescues him he gets down and, and gives him water gives him water and they start talking Emmett's a good guy Payton's a good guy and Emmett says he's going to Turley the town of Turley right you know and uh and he uh, takes um Payton with him yeah and uh uh so they they're together they're riding you know they're they seem friendly and they roll into Turley and he gives him a coin so he can Buy some clothes. clothes or whatever. But then, and then we meet Cobb. 
Brian Dennehy. Right. Brian Dennehy is Cobb who... Well, before that happens, doesn't he... He spots the guy who stole his horse. He does. And That's he, right. He, uh, oh, he goes to buy a gun. He sees the guy. He rushes into the store to get a gun. And uh, he can't well, that afford... Happens, no, no, that happens later. No, that's... No, 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 no it happens because we meet Cobb at first. We do? Yeah, we meet Cobb at first and his men, and we find out that Emmett... Or we find out that, that Payton used to ride with Cobb, and they have history. And Cobb and, like, Jeff Fahey, and we see that there there are settlers that are leaving, and there's a money box... And and so there's a there's a wagon train leaving, and you meet Cobb, and they're going somewhere, and he's got men. Well, he offers him a job. He offers him a job, and he, he doesn't, doesn't take it. He doesn't want to work it with him because they used to do bad things together. They used to do bad things together, and, and then we find out that pay uh, that Emmett's brother, Kevin Costner, is in jail in Turley. Yeah, but you're missing a whole. No, because I'm getting because remember. Kevin Costner gets, I mean, Kevin Klein gets put in jail with Kevin Costner after he shoots the dude. Right. <clears throat> well, you don't see that until, <clears throat> I mean, you don't know that until it happens. Well, that's true. All right, you go. You tell. So why am I telling? You tell the story then. <laughs> it's, but, but I will say this. It's pretty complicated. It is. Because they're they're telling you a lot of different things. So Cl There's a lot of information. Hayden uh, and Cobb have a, a history. They do. Now, Emmett Emmett is there has gotten just, out of, but he's gotten out of jail. He was in jail yes, for was. 5 years That's because right. he killed a man. That was at the very beginning of the movie. Yes, and he killed a man um let's see. Uh uh he killed uh, a guy named McKendrick. And McKendrick was a big dude in Silverado. Right. And they got in a fight or whatever and and Emmett's like I killed this guy, I did my time, but I'm going to go back to Silverado and see my sister right. before my brother and I go to California. Yeah, but you don't know that Kevin Costner is his brother yet. Right. Even when he goes and visits them in jail. So Kevin Klein sees the guy who stole his horse and he uh, is desperate for a gun. So <clears throat> he goes into the store and tries to borrow the gun, a good gun. And the guy's like, no, I sell guns. I don't rent them. I don't rent them. And so he's like, well, what can I afford with his one measly little coin? And it's like this old gun and the barrel falls out. And so he has to buy that. And he um, goes out and shoots the guy. And, um, and then that's when... Actually, he's absolved of that. He's not in jail yet. He's absolved because... The, the guy has his horse, and he's able to identify the saddle. My name's right. on the saddle. So how does he end up in jail? Well, that comes in a little bit later, because I was mistaken. That's right. You're mixing up the story. Yeah, I mean, so, so you're confusing me. So so anyway, <laughs> so Cobb leaves. The wagon train leaves. Right. And, um... Wait, first of all, Cobb loans him $13... To get clothes. To get clothes, that's right. <clears throat> and so he goes and buys... So he owes Cobb $13, and he won't let him forget it. Who's Brian Dennehy. <laughs> right. So then how does he end up in jail? I don't remember now. Well, let's... So, wait, we got to... There's a lot going on. Oh, okay. There's well, a lot. I'll let you continue with the rest, because right now, because I... Well, so then, so then, um, so Cobb leaves he, with his men going somewhere, and Cobb says, I have a job. Like, I have a legitimate job. And Kevin Klein's like, sure you do. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so he goes on. The wagon train leaves. leaves. And and um, Brian James, who is uncredited in the movie, is the leader of the wagon train. He's, like, playing a bit part. And um, uh, he was one of the replicants in Blade Runner. Yeah, yeah. And and so he they the, they leave. And then Emmett and uh, Payton are just, they're having a, they go into the saloon. Well, that's right. And Peyton says, "My salo saloons are smelly saloons are my favorite things in yeah. life." And well, he's like, "Let's go. I'll buy you a drink." And he's like, "Well, you don't have any money." <laughs> he's well, like, you... "Well, then you'll buy me a drink." <laughs> well, he said that later in Silverado, but they. they oh, I they... thought that was then. Oh my goodness, we're getting this story all. But so up. anyway, no, 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 we're not. So so <laughs> Peyton and Peyton and Emma are eating, and <clears throat> Danny Glover comes in. Danny Glover. Danny yeah. Glover comes in, uh, amiable, but he's black. 
you know, and he's walked into the saloon. Right. And he, he puts he down a, a whole bottle. Yeah, of whiskey. saddlebags. He goes, I haven't slept in a bed and had a drink of whiskey in 10 yeah. days. And the woman behind the counter is like, OK. And Danny Glover pays him. Right. She, he wants a room and a bottle of whiskey. Uh, yeah, he just wants to sleep in a bottle of whiskey. And then the proprietor of this establishment, racist fuck that he is, yeah. comes out and says, sorry, boy, you, know, you might as well get out. Yeah. You know, we don't ser- like you we might as well say we don't your serve kind. your kind here. Droids, you know. So he did say that basically. Right, he big no, he basically did say. And then of course, Danny Glover's like, "Bro, I just paid you. I, I just paid for my I whiskey. Just want to st- a bed to lay in and my whiskey." And then two other racist patrons of the store of the, of the saloon get up and come over, and they're gonna they're gonna make Danny Glover leave. Of course, it doesn't yeah. work out that way. They they start the fight. And he basically shoots them, and and you know the bar's all messed up, and they just get in a fight. They get into a fight, and uh, then the sheriff comes in. The sheriff comes in, and it's John Cleese, Monty Python, John Cleese, it is. who plays. I mean, this is one of the things I love about this movie, is just the cast. Yeah. So John Cleese comes in. Oh, by the way, Rosanna Arquette was part of the wagon train yes. that Peyton had noticed, and and. and um, uh, Kevin Klein noticed her. Noticed her, right and she away. noticed him. And um, uh, so Danny Glover comes in and uh, gets in a fight, an altercation, and he gets kicked out. He does of the bar. But Peyton and Emmett take notice of him, and like they're on his side. Yeah, they're and like, they, that's not fair. Yeah, they basically said they they tell the sheriff, they tell John Cleese. He didn't start the fight, Sheriff. Yeah, you know, that's not right. It's all good. And mm-hmm. and uh, so, you know. And then they ask the Sheriff, uh, uh, Emmett asks the Sheriff, have you seen this guy? He kind of looks like me, but he's... Right. And the Sheriff's like, oh, I've seen that guy. I know that guy. And the Sheriff takes him into the jail. Yeah. And it turns out the gallows that's being built is to hang Emmett's brother, who that's turns right. out to be Kevin Klein. That's right. I mean, it turns out to be... Yeah. What am I saying? Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. Too many Kevins. Yes. So it's now... Kevin Costner's in jail. He's Scott Glenn's brother. He's Emmett's right. brother. And... Um, a really young Kevin Klein. Uh, 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 Kevin Costner. Yes, we can't even... We can't even... <laughs> Klein, Costner, whatever. Kevin Costner's Jake, <laughs> who's the brother of Emmett. Right. And and uh, then Kevin Klein um, is, of course... Yeah. And then that night, this is how he ends up in jail. I remember now. They go into a saloon. They go into a saloon. And, um, well, first of all, when they go to the jail, um, Emmett pretends like he doesn't care. He First of all, he doesn't reveal that it's his brother. Nope. And he's like, oh, well, I guess you're going to die. And oh, and, and, uh, and then they, they, have a, they have a thing between them. When's he going to get uh, hung? And, and yeah, At yeah, dawn. Yeah. And then the sheriff's like, no, at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> so they, so- they've... See, he was he was smart. He was trying to get information as to what time. Yes, and now so they got this. Now they're going to the saloon. Yes, and now that's going when to... that's when Scott Glenn Emmett says you don't have any money. Right. So buy me a drink. You buy me a drink. And they go into the saloon, and Kevin Klein sees the guy that's wearing his hat. His hat, and his he hat. Had described the hat as a black hat with a silver band. Oh man, the silver band made me spill my coffee. I wow. mean coffee. I don't have a... My wine. It's fine. It's not a lot. It's fine. Are you sure it's... Oh, it is a lot. It is a lot. Oh man. You know what? There is There is a towel I that's over there. You see it? I'm sorry. Excuse me one second. Wow. We, we, we've never spilled anything on, uh, on this before. Yes, we have. Have we? Have we spilled? I have. Well, hey, look. You can't say that it's not real and genuine here on Elizabeth's Whining About Movies. <laughs> I got I mean, enthusiastic about the hat. Enthusiasms. Enthusiasm. So Kevin Klein sees the guy with that, who's who. He was one of the guys that left him for dead in the desert. So. Yeah, he uh, and he's wearing his hat. He's wearing his hat. So Kevin Klein guns him down. Well, he confronts him. Conf- I mean, he stands up. And the guy, the guy shoots first. The guy draws on him. So he shoots him. He shoots him. And so he gets thrown in the same jail cell he does. as Jake. So now and he's Kevin complaining Klein, because he's like, "Well, that guy shot first. He shouldn't have been thrown in jail." So now, basically, we find out that they they burn down uh, uh, the the gallows gets burned down. Scott Glenn burns down the gallows, 
and we yeah. have Peyton and we have Jake in jail. And then Scott Glenn, they have a big plan. Uh, Peyton and Jake, uh, they break out together. Scott Glenn brings them their horses, and the three of them blow out of town with John Cleese following at, with a posse. Yeah. So we now have <clears throat> Peyton, Jake, and and uh, and uh, Emmett. They're fleeing, and as they're being chased by the posse through the West, Mal, D- Danny Glover's character, happens to be out there. And when when the posse is going to get to them, Danny Glover starts shooting. That's right. And John Cleese goes. <clears throat> My jurisdiction ends here. That's right. He didn't want to get shot. <laughs> He's like, I'm out of here. He didn't, yes. He didn't want to get <laughs> shot. So that's all preamble. I mean, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It, it, it put you in the well, milieu. the whole, like, escaping from um, from jail was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was all good. Mm-hmm. But now we have our four main characters, yeah. our team. The men on the mission have been created. Yeah. So the four of them are all going to the town of Silverado. Right. And the town of Silverado, so Emmett and Jake are going to see their sister who works there. To say goodbye because to they're, say, on they're their going way to, California. to California. And Mal, Danny Glover's character, is going to see his mom and his dad because they have a homestead out there right. and his sister, his family. Oh wait, by the way, important little nugget of information about Jake. The reason he was put in jail is because he says he kissed a girl. Yes, he kissed a girl. <laughs> He kissed a girl and things got out of hand and he ended up killing a man over it. He <laughs> kissed someone him, else's girl. They make him look like really like a young guy because like his clothes are kind of s- small on him. So they make him look very young. And he's like a kid. He's a Kevin Costner that's, <laughs> that's 36 years younger than he is now. So, and he was. He was young. Now, interestingly enough, Kevin Costner was supposed to be the character who killed himself in The Big Chill. But casting hmm. cut him out. I don't think I've seen The Big Chill. Oh, would it surprise you to know that I have The Big Chill on Blu-ray? How on many Criterion? Oh, I only have one. What? Only one copy of The Big <laughs> Chill. But I love The Big Chill. Well, you just ruined it for me. What? You just said Kevin Costner was supposed to kill himself. He, he's the- dead. He's killed himself at the beginning of the movie. The whole movie starts because mm. his character killed himself and all the other characters get together at his funeral. Ah. So I'm not ruining anything. Okay. So anyway, so everyone's going to the town of Silverado yeah. to see what's up. And and so Peyton's going there, but he doesn't really have a reason to go to Silverado. Yeah, I mean, well, at this point, he doesn't have a plan, so he might as well go with his new buddies. It's true. Now, now um, Emmett knows that he's going to town, and the McKittricks, the guy that he killed, he knows the McKittrick family is still there with their homestead and everything, and he's hoping... That uh, Ethan McKittrick, the son of the man he killed, will be okay with everything since he served his time in jail. Right. And they're going to see, and then uh, Danny Glover's going to see his family. So it's all family oriented, really. Yeah. His his Danny Glover's family is right outside of Silverado. So on the way there, they find the homesteaders on the way to Silverado. They haven't right. got to Silverado before. They find the homesteaders, and... Uh, They're all upset because they were robbed. They were robbed. They were robbed by the, the guys in Turley, that they yeah. saw in Turley. And they want to... Yeah, the guys that they hired to take them to Silverado um, actually robbed them. And so what's really cool is that now our four guys, Mal, Peyton, Emmett, and um, Jake... Decide we're gonna go liberate. We're gonna go uh, get this money yeah. back for you. And I think who stays but behind? No, what? no, nobody stays behind. Yeah. But one of the one of the homesteaders, the the husband, the husband of, of Roseanne Arquette. He's like, I don't trust you guys. You're gonna steal the money. I'm going with you. Yeah. And they're like, Don't you want to protect your wife? And he's like, Mind your own business. I'm but coming. one of them stays behind. No, one of, no one off, of, Kevin Klein offers to stay behind because he's he has he's interested in, um, in um, Rosanna. Rosanna Arquette. And um, so he offers this, but he doesn't. He ends up going. So they, all, so they all go. They all go. And they find the guys at a hideout. Typical bad gang of the guys that the, yeah. the, they've stolen the money, but they've gone to like their big gang. 
Right. And of course, our team of men. There's only four, so four of them. But there's a lot of these ganks. Yeah, that, so, so they come up with a plan. They come up with a plan, and in a cool action scene, they they attack. The little subterfuge Emmett sneaks in and pretends he's a he's a he's, he's a, a bank a bank robber. Yeah, of some that kind. he's there's being a chased after by a posse. Him. And um, anyway, they end up uh, releasing the the horses, and it, there's a stampede, and there's and a shootout. There's People a shootout, die, and and they, they get the money back. They get the money. They get the money back and they give it to the homesteaders. But what all of this has done is you've gathered these men, these four men, these main characters together. You've shown they work well together. Yeah. So the first the first hour of this movie is is gathering this team, which is interesting because the movie's a little over two hours long. And they get to Silverado. And and yes. when they get to Silverado, everyone kind of parts ways. You yeah. know, Emmett and Jake go to see the their sister, their sister, and their sister and her husband run the land office. Right, and they the have home, a son. They have a young son. They have a young son, and the homesteaders get to their land that they've already purchased. Right. And Danny Glover goes to find his father. Yeah. And finds that their land has been the burned out. The cabin is burned down, and and there's all these cattle, cattle that's not there everywhere. Everywhere. And then Peyton finds out. He goes into the saloon. And he meets Linda Hunt, who runs the saloon, the Morning Star. Bell, the I think Bell, right? Uh, Bell, the Morning Star, I think. Uh, Stella, Stella. It's yeah. not Bell. It's Stella. Like, what? Stella's the Morning Stella. Star. And then, of course, Payton has Jeff Fahey, uh, who they used to ride together. They all rode, rode with Cobb, and Jeff Fahey is with Cobb. And you find out that Cobb, Brian Denny, is lo and behold. That not only does he own this big saloon he in town, saloon. he's also the sheriff. He runs. The town. He runs the town, and then the uh, McK- McKendricks, not McKittricks, the McKendricks are trying to get rid of, they're trying to take over all the land. They are. And they've got Cobb on the payroll, and they'll do whatever they can to, to they'll, that, they burn, they burn the, um, they burn Danny Glover's, the black family out, they're threatening the homesteaders, they're basically using their muscle to take over all the land for their own. And they're own. having Cobb help. And yeah. Cobb, they're using Cobb, has leveraged his position as sheriff and the owner of the saloon. They made him sheriff, and so they're using him to get what they want. He's their hired gun. He's yeah. enforcing their will. And then Jeff Goldblum, as a gambler, rolls into town. <laughs> with a big fur coat. With a big fur coat. And, and, and he takes up with Danny Glover's sister, the hot young right. black prostitute. So so Danny Glover's sister who hates him cuz Danny Glover's been away for so long. He abandoned them for 9 years and all these bad things happened when he was not there to help his family. Yeah. So she's pretty pissed at him. So basically there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. There's a, there's a lot of intertwined stories that, that is pretty complex for a western. Yeah. Uh, and and I so what did you think? Okay, let me ask you. What did you think of all this setup? This convoluted for a Western, this is a pretty convoluted plot. I mean, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is epic, but the right. story's pretty simple. simple. You know, it's it's the interplay between basically two men and then yeah. a third guy. Mm. So how did you feel about all these characters and all these intertwining plots? Yeah, I mean, it felt very 80s adventure kind of movie. Um, it, this movie's very 1980. I mean, it, it's smack dab. And it's literally yeah. in the sixth month... Of the mid of 1985, it's literally you could not get more mid 80s than this movie is. I mean, right. it is the pinnacle of the 80s. Yeah. yeah, it's like a movie movie. It is a movie movie. That's the thing. I mean, I think in the wake of two Indiana Jones movies and, exactly. and everything, you know, it made me think of Indiana Jones. Yeah, it's definitely Lawrence Kasdan was trying to capture not just the western genre, but he was going after Indiana Jones. He was Adventure. going after. They were trying to make a big budget yeah uh studio yeah they were trying to turn this into a movie that that everybody could watch that would have the same feeling that any steven spielberg didn't produce this but he might he might as well have yes i agree absolutely so how did you feel about that though is this overstuffed is it two 80s i grew up in the 80s i love 80s movies so i i loved the story i love this movie i was overwhelmed by the the music. And probably when I first saw it, it didn't bother me because it was in the 80s. Right. I mean, they're trying to capture Raiders of the Lost Ark. Dun, 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 dun. Absolutely. You know. 
And this this movie has a lot of that. It's nonstop. Yeah, it, it's it, nonstop score, nonstop. And I I don't know why I paid so much attention to the music, but it was just constantly there. And in, in some scenes, it didn't seem like the right mood for the scene. It was like all this upbeat kind of Indiana Jones kind of music. Also, the movie is written. These aren't real people. These <laughs> are all movie, movie people. people. And, and, and and I say this all the time. I talk about like real people. Like when you watch movies of the 70s, if you watch even Jaws, the characters in Jaws are real people. Yeah, they Sheriff like Brody's real people. like real. Yeah. Quint's real. Even Matt Hooper's real. And everybody else that you meet in, in Amity, they're all like Mayor Vaughn. They're all like real people. Yeah. They're, but they, they're on the verge, they're on the cusp of being movie people. Yeah. Mm. You know, and 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 Lucas and Spielberg, this movie is totally a construct. It is a total movie movie. It These is. characters are written. Yeah. This this feels like if you're gonna write a commercial western script, this was it. This is it. You know, the the subtext is very easy to understand. Mm -hmm. It has all the tropes. It checks all the boxes. <laughs> yeah. And it, it doesn't have where is good... Like, how would you compare and contrast this to Good, the Bad, and the Ugly? Yeah. Um, to me, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is very artistic. It feels like a, a beautiful painting. And this, this feels more like a, a commercialized painting. Right. This is commercial art, but Good, the Bad, the Ugly is real. Yeah. I mean, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is like going to a real, authentic restaurant and having a great... Right. But, but this is like going to <laughs> this Olive is like Garden. Going to, yes. The, this is like the... Which, which we don't hate the Olive Garden. No, we don't hate the Olive Garden's fine. I love the breadsticks. I like the... Pasta. It's very, it's great. It's, it's very good the food, salad. but it's serviceable. It's, 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 it, it's, it, it's, it's food for everyone. Yeah. And it's also, and food, everyone loves Olive Garden, but it's also whether food, they want to admit it or not. There's no chef involved. They've got, they've got their, their chain recipe. That's right. For fettuccine. And wherever or chain, you go across the country, you will always the eat the same thing at Olive Garden. Right. The salad will always taste the same. The breadsticks will always taste the same, and all the pasta. But I have to say, look, still, I mean, this film is beautifully directed. Oh yeah. It has great characters. I don't hate this film. No, no, I, I, I don't <laughs> hate it either. I it's mean, it's just I, a different experience than the good, the bad, and the ugly. Which is, yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this this movie is like going to a frat party at a college. <laughs> Whereas, you know, you're going to go to the PhD candidate party and that was where you watch Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> right. uh, even though the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly is not its total populist it's a, it's and a, it's populist entertainment, but it's made, I mean, the sensibility it, is totally... It's very artistic to me. To me, it feels like a very unique painting. Right. But it is, I mean, it's, it, it's a very interesting experience because it, you could have made this movie... And and told the exact same story, but made it modern day. It doesn't have to That's be a western. True. That's true. It, I mean, even though it, it it it's set in the western milieu of the old west yeah. and the t old towns, this may as well may have well have been a movie that was set in the forties or the fifties or true, something. True, true. You could have. Yeah. I mean, it does. Whereas I think the good, the bad, and the ugly could only exist. I, I mean, you could rejigger the story and tell it in a different time, but yeah. It, I don't. Is there something wrong with that? Do you think that there's? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's like, like you said about the restaurants. That was a great analogy, and uh, we enjoy both a, a beautiful, um, you know, expensive, one of a kind meal, but we also enjoy a chain restaurant every once in a while. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Although it's 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 difficult. It's hard for me to say just that because Lawrence Kasdan. You know, he he did Body Heat, he did Big Chill, then he does this, and he is he's a man that understands populism. Yeah. You know, he was appealing, he was making the Western genre had been gone for a long time, and 
this is like this is like the western genre was gone but now i'm gonna resurrect the western genre and i'm gonna make it populist i'm gonna yeah. make it i need to make it for the 80s audience because kids of the 80s did not grow up with westerns like right. myself i mean you know i want star wars and i want <laughs> alien and blade runner and dawn of the dead and 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 all the movies that I, i'm not westerns come on so this was an attempt. I love that he was reviving the Western movies. I love. I, that. I do too, and I love. I mean, these but these characters are movie characters. Like they Kevin, are movie characters. Kevin Costner's character, uh, it, Jake, is totally a movie character. Totally. And and you know I, I but I will say there are great scenes in this movie. Like when Kevin Costner goes in and meets Stella, uh -huh. the proprietor, and they have the conversation about I love a good saloon. And you see that that's a great. Linda Hunt had won an Academy Award for uh, right. uh, for Year of Living Dangerously, and for Peter Weir in what eighty eighty two, with Mel Gibson, the woman playing a boy. By the way, she was playing a boy in that film. Every uh, time I see see her now, I think of The Incredibles. <laughs> um. Oh, <laughs> she. I mean, she is great, and she's so good. She's so good in this movie. She's excellent. And the relationship that she has with Kevin Klein. Yes. They wow. click right away, and, it, and and they have great chemistry. Uh, I think that they really hit it well, <clears throat> and you really believe that they hit it off right away. Oh, yeah, and, and Brian Dennehy as the heavy, and you know mm -hmm. he's literally the heavy. Yeah. You know, he's a big guy, hulking yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the year before, he'd been like the benevolent alien in Cocoon, or maybe it was he was in Cocoon. Maybe Cocoon was 85. Cocoon might be 85, so he might have been... In Cocoon and in this movie in the same at the year. Same time. I didn't check into that, but um, yeah, I mean, you look at that and it's like, oh my god, you know, these. Uh, it, it's just everything. The fact that John Cleese is in this movie is the British sheriff. They know. <laughs> so great. I know. I you know I might not be like what you were expecting. <laughs> well, all right, mate. You know, I just that's Australian. I don't know what accent I'm trying to do, but it yeah, was. Australian. It was uh, all right, mate. Bye bye. So I have a slab of hey, bye, mate. Um, not the right accent. No, that's my Australian accent. Yeah, that's not a British accent. No, I was, I, everyone, any Australian timulus spider monkey knows what I'm saying. <laughs> mate, mate, a slab of hey, bye. Anyway, uh, the, uh, uh, the, um, but there's lots going on. Yeah. And, and everything is revealed. The big, the big plan is that is that everybody is running afoul of the the um, uh, 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 McKendricks, the McKendricks, everybody, like all these, the McKendricks are causing problems for everybody. They are. They're, they want to kill Jake and Emmett. They want to kill Mal, ultimately, and then and then um, Payton. Cobb actually likes Payton and they ho and hopes yeah. hopes look you used to ride with me you can have a, a, a yes. you come work for me you sell your soul to the devil and we'll have a good thing you got your and then he starts threatening Stella and yes so it's all the McKendricks are the orchestrators of all this so everybody it basically the McKendricks have to go down but I I think the biggest yeah. the biggest uh <clears throat> my biggest criticism of this movie is Cobb is the main villain. He is. But it's really the McKendricks it's, who are, and they're there pulling is, all the strings. There's, but the there's no the guy that plays uh, um, uh, Roy Baker who plays uh, Ethan McKendrick. He's not really a heavy. Like he should be the Emperor, Cobb's Vader. Well, he's, and McKendrick should be the end. He's not. He's kind of weak. He's a weak. He's behind the scenes, you know, conducting everyone. But he doesn't get much. Doesn't get much screen time. He's not on screen very much. I think they cut a lot out of this movie. That's what it feels like to me because even the Roseanne Arquette. She's um, barely there. She's barely there, and and Kevin Klein has a thing for her from the moment he sees her. But then all of a sudden it switches to where she. Is. He he actually says to Emmett, "Hey, I wouldn't care if you go visit her." Yeah, that seemed weird to me. I feel like they cut out a big chunk of the romance. Because it doesn't make sense. All of a sudden, she's more interested in oh. Ethan, and he's they cut. In they her. had to cut it. They have cut, this movie is probably three and a half hours they, long. They cut it up so much that that whole that whole storyline doesn't really make sense to me. No, no, and, and she's wasted. You, Roseanne Arquette was was a pretty big star at the time. Yeah, you know, in movies like Baby It's You, and she was doing all kinds she was of in Big Blue, right? Or was that her sister? 
Oh, was she in the, maybe she was in the big blue. She was. It was either her. No, or, it wasn't or Patricia. Patricia. It was her. Then it was her. Mm. And I saw that movie in France, and I Le Grand Bleu. It was Bleu. huge. Le, Le Grand Bleu. Le Grand Bleu. Le Grand Bleu. And I had a huge poster of it. Uh, I I have the movie. I have the Blu-ray. I wish we still had that poster. Uh, uh, I like which that. we got in France. I I really like that movie. I love. It was huge in France, and I was there that summer when it came out, so we saw it. Anyway, wrong movie. <laughs> Anyway, she was a big star at the time. Yeah, no, she was doing a lot of a lot of interesting stuff, and she, yeah, I mean, look, this film is 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 edited. It, it it's very much a product of studio filmmaking at the time, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. and I think that it 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 and of course all these storylines, and, and I have to say, it's very deftly, even though it's cut down, the way it goes between all the storylines is pretty great. It is. I mean, I I, I do feel that the film. Is is really well done. There's it, a lot of storylines going on, but I never felt confused about what's happening. No, no, and it was great. And of course, everyone gets beat up. Emmett gets attacked. Jake gets kidnapped. The young boy gets kidnapped. Yep. Their sister gets burned out. The the sister's husband gets shot. I mean, the stakes are 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 suitably risen. Yes. You know. Um, uh. Uh. Uh, Mal's sister gets ki- shot. Yeah. The, the Jeff Goldblum sells him out. Yes. You know he's like because he's he's down with the sheriff. He's like I'm here to make money. I, I'm not. Yeah, he I'm, doesn't. I'm not, he just wants to make money. I'm not picking a side. He, he's not. So, <laughs> I mean, all this stuff is bubbling up, and and you've yeah. got a great showdown when they finally go to the McKendrick uh, ranch, and there's a great there's a stampede. You know, and yeah, which they the running was great. the stampede's great, <laughs> and there's a huge gunfight and everything, and then Cobb's men it comes down to Peyton and Cobb as you knew it would, of course. And and uh, I guess everyone lives happily ever after. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, they have a um, a western shootout at the end. Multiple shoot. I mean, the the, the well, the, I mean between Cobb and and oh yeah, you've got uh, the, the the most classic showdown ever. Um. What is that? Cobb and Payton. Uh, a gunfight. No, yeah, a gunfight, but a duel. A duel. Yeah, a duel. A like, duel. And it has to come down between the the <laughs> the, the, the two of them, you know, yep. and it's. And that's how it ends. Well, it ends. He Payton becomes the sheriff of the town. Oh, he, that's he, right. He controls the saloon. Emmett and, and, and Jake go off to everyone California. Everyone goes to California at that point. Even the sister and her family, the because sis- their whole house burned down. Their whole yeah, their their, their office burned and down. And also Danny Glover and his sister, they all go to California except for uh, Peyton, who becomes the sheriff. Yeah, because he's got his bar, he's got a saloon, his favorite yeah. thing in the world. Yeah, with Stella. So it's a pretty epic, epic story. But but I do think, I do think that this movie is a was a conscious attempt to bring back a more abundant genre in the western so yes. it was using very populist very uh uh hollywood studio this is a summer movie you know so yes. it's not I, I think this this is a movie that everyone likes like when i saw this movie i really liked it because i liked mm-hmm. all the characters i got into it it was successful people really enjoyed it but to me to me it it if anything it represents the Western genre was, was done. I mean, there's there Kevin Costner made. Uh, there's have been Open Range, which I really like, and he made that. There have been westerns that have come Dances after with this. Wolves. Yeah, but Dances with Wolves is not quite a western. I mean, it's set in that era, but it's a different. It's more of a first contact movie. It's true. You know, it's in a way Dances with Wolves is like a science fiction movie. It's about a human being going to an alien race. Even though it's the indigenous peoples, but two cultures coming together, I, I love. That's why I, I love that. Dances with Wolves to me is like a Star Trek movie. I love. You, that you movie. could have made a Star Trek movie and did the same plot, which is what Avatar is. Avatar is Avatar I was is exactly it's so much like Avatar. Yeah. And I, by the way, I love Dances with Wolves. Love it. Too. Love it. I, the extended when I first version. Thought, saw it. I was like, oh my god! I absolutely love this movie. This is one of my favorite movies. I loved it. I loved it so much that I was I would rent it all the time and just watch it over and over again. Yeah, and the score. But I have the long version. It's three and a half hours longer. It is. Than, yeah, longer than one you have probably. I don't two, have it. Two I versions. Rent it. But I love it. I love it. I love. Uh, but, but again, this was 
uh, that came after, but the but the Western genre used to be a, a staple. Like people loved Westerns. Yeah. And then Westerns kind of went away. They did. They went away. The, the 60s and especially the 70s, all, even though you had Butch Cassidy and you had McCabe and Mrs. Miller and you had... The 70s pretty much killed the Western genre. Uh, the Vietnam War destroyed Westerns. And yet this was an attempt, I think, to bring... To bring it back. To bring it back, but bring it back. But the problem is... They didn't bring it back. They didn't bring it back. Even though this was a decent movie. I think it's a really good movie. But it's it's a... It's a faux. It's it's not. It's a movie movie. To me, it's 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 the Force Awakens of Star Wars. What's Force Away? The Force Awakens is a <laughs> fake Star Wars movie. It's it's oh, we're gonna try and bring Star Wars back by giving you all the Star Wars tropes. Here they are. Although I think this is a much better movie than Force Awakens is. Um. I didn't hate The Force Awakens, I have to tell you. I didn't hate it. That's fine. I enjoyed it. It's a terrible movie, though. <laughs> people, look, people like it because it's Star Wars and they get to see... The, it's a ter- The fact that you never put Han Solo, Princess Leia, and Luke Skywalker, R2, and 3PO, well, and Chewie right. they, they in one definitely... frame. I mean, that, that shows how, how ridiculous it was. It's true. It's like, I'm. The, why am I going to... J.J. Uh, Abrams had no incentive to do that, and Disney had no incentive to do that, which shows how bankrupt both they are. I mean, from a corporate standpoint... Anyway, I don't want to get into that, but <laughs> but this this um, this um, uh, this film is kind of like that, and like we're gonna let's bring back and and it's definitely a love letter to I the western. I wouldn't compare the two. Well, maybe not. Maybe I'm just being a dick. You you liked this film. I lo- no, I love this film, but I, what I mean to say is, the same way that The Force Awakens was there to resurrect Star Wars, right, 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 it right. was there to resurrect not the prequel trilogy, it was there to resurrect movies that were gone in 1983. Right. If you called Star Wars a genre, what, what Disney wanted was Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi. They're not talking prequel trilogy. They wanted Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi, and The Force Awakens was supposed to bring that back in 2015. So you're looking at 22 years later. Like, let's bring back, let's bring that back. Yeah. And it had been gone for 22 years. And that's what Disney, Disney did not buy the prequels, even though they did. What they wanted was Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi. That's what they wanted. Right, And Force Awakens was an attempt to resurrect something that we hadn't seen since 1983. Right. And like Silverado, a lot of people were crowd-pleased by it. Yeah. And I, I, I thought Silverado was actually a very, very good movie. But the thing about the West was the push westward. We, the, the generation that was watching Silverado had no attachment, especially younger people. Right. Had no attachment to the Western genre. It was not part of the American lifeblood. I mean... Not at that point. No. And so when you're watching it, like, I get it. Like, I yeah. understand. But I don't... I, it's not part of my DNA anymore. Westerns were part of the American well, they DNA. Well, they tried to deal with that by making it an adventure that felt like Indiana Jones and like the kind of movies that were coming out at that yeah. time. And so they were trying to uh, get the new generation to buy into this genre. That's because Lawrence Kasdan loved genre, uh, uh, Westerns, the genre, when he was growing up, so that's what he made. Yeah. And it's a good movie. It's a good movie. I think it's 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 one of the better studio movies of the '80s. I really like this film. I love the cast. It's beautifully made. It's a be- It's a perfect studio product. Yeah. It's what studios do best. Mm-hmm. And and while I think the craft is there, you know what's missing? What's missing is the soul. It has the soul of a studio movie. It does. But it doesn't have the soul of a real western. It doesn't. That's true. I can agree with that. It's, it doesn't feel like a true Western. No, it's... It's you're, just set in the West. You're watching the theme park version of a Western. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I agree with that. Which sometimes we want Olive Garden. Y- yeah, I mean, it's... And it's not a bad thing, but I... I, I and it, it's... Again, it's so interesting because it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. But it just doesn't have the soul that it, it... And by the way, 
it could never have the soul of a real Western because it was made by somebody who grew up watching Westerns and loving Westerns, wanting to recreate. And what's interesting, whereas someone like Quentin Tarantino... Yeah, I was about to say, like, but, compared to... But, but the difference is... Quentin Tarantino puts his own spin on these things. He does. He doesn't go back and tries to. He doesn't try to slavishly recreate something. He takes all of this stuff and puts it together and and and, and blends it into this Quentin Tarantino Sunday. He's not trying to recreate. In a way, he is. No, he's not. But he's mixing it in with his own storytelling abilities and his sensibility and his. I don't know. There's no. something wonderful about what he does. How yes, he because... takes what he loves and makes it the even more artistic and more expressive. What he's doing is a pastiche. You know, he's creating something new. He's creating something with nostalgia, a hybrid. I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge fan, I have to say. And what, what Lawrence Kasdan is doing is he's trying to recreate. He is. The Western through a certain sensibility. During a time where it, adventures were a huge thing. So he's trying to fit it all into yeah. that kind of feeling. Whereas Quentin Tarantino is taking all of these things, all these techniques. He's all these... an artist. He, well, he he's is. He's a creative artist. But that's not to take away from Lawrence Kasdan, no, who's a great not. filmmaker. because. Of not. But this was the, his third film, and his second pastiche is... is Pardon me. Tarantino's doing a pastiche. Lawrence Kasdan's trying to recreate the genre in the era he's working in. Yes. And he can't. You can't do it. You can't recreate a genre that. that you can't bring a genre that. Well, that, he did. He did it in the '80s kind of way. He, he did it in a pop, uh, uh, pop culture kind of way. Right, but it's it's still the theme park recreation of the western without being the real western. Yeah, but sometimes that's okay. It is okay. It's not a bad thing. And and by the way, we did get things like Young Guns after this. Wanted dead or alive, you know. I like that one. Uh, yeah, everyone likes Young Guns. <laughs> it's like the Lost, the way Lost Boys is a vampire <clears throat> movie. Young Guns, it's like the Brat Pack Western. Yes. But again, again, Young Guns is the same. It suffers from the same problems. Is that it's 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 a eighties Xerox of a genre that was that it, it's a yeah, cop. but it was so. I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, Young Guns is perfectly serviceable entertainment. <laughs> so cool. But it's not, it's not, it doesn't have the soul of a real Western. I like it. I, look, everyone likes it. Who doesn't like Young Guns? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I wonder what the audience is going to pick for our, um, our one Western. I don't know, but we better find out Western. because that's supposed to be on Wednesday. That's our next movie. That's what we have to watch tomorrow. Oh my God. I hope that uh, you have a movie for us, Richard. I don't know. So, okay, listen. We have uh, letters. Okay. And um, this one comes from Jack Dorch, who says, I really enjoyed your review of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I just want to make sure you know about the Sad Hills Cemetery set restoration hmm. from a few years ago. Fans from across the world got together to restore and rebuild the set used in the film right down to Arch Stanton's grave. <laughs> wow. Call me D-Man1701. All right, D-Man1701, you and I share a number in common. That is so cool. And I will put this video in the chat. I hope it's something that you can visit because we should go see that. Uh, I'm sure you can visit. Here is that for the Sad Hill Cemetery set. I put it in the chat. <clears throat> um, and let's see. Uh, we got another letter here. That is not it. Omar94. Can you believe Omar94 wrote us a letter? I wonder <laughs> where Omar was. Hi, Robin Elizabeth. I was looking up some behind-the-scenes information on different movies and noticed how Silverado played an important role for Kevin Costner's career. Mm. Lawrence Kasdan was a friend of Costner, and Kasdan promised Costner a future role in a movie he would do. Silverado gave Costner a breakout role. It did. However, it was with The Untouchables which led him to become a major player in the industry. From there, he became one of the A-listers in Hollywood, starring in a series of hit movies. 
Following Untouchables like No Way Out, Bull Durham, Field of Dreams, Dances with Wolves, which he won two Oscars for, which he also directed, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, JFK, The Bodyguard, which Kasdan wrote a script for, and A Perfect World, which Clint Eastwood directed. During that time, he did make Revenge in 1990, which flopped critically and commercially. Yeah, but it was awesome. But he was still able to maintain his star status. That was directed, by the way, by Tony Scott. Due to the success of his other movies around that time, unfortunately, his status as an A-lister didn't last forever. He teamed up with Kasdan again on the film Wyatt Earp in 1994, where they tackled the same story as My Darling Clementine, which was critically and commercially unsuccessful. That film was when his star status started declining as his movies afterwards, like The War, Waterworld, The Postman, and others. Hey, wait a second. Are you telling me? Are you telling me? I liked Waterworld. That Waterworld? Are you <clears throat> dissing Waterworld? Have you seen? This has three cuts of the movie I in really it. I really liked that Just movie. so you know, do not do not diminish I liked the, the power too. of Waterworld. By the way, this Arrow box set, if you are a Waterworld fan and don't own this... I pity the fool. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. It's amazing what I have just on this desk. Look, I've even got Mythos Boba Fett's gun right here. Uh, let me put him in Boba's arms so he has it. Um, <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, his status as an A-lister didn't last forever. He teamed up with Kazan again on the film Wyatt Earp in 94, which was critically and commercially unsuccessful. That film was when his star status started declining as his movies afterwards like The War, Waterworld, The Postman. By the way, he directed The Postman, and I loved it. I and others became critical and commercial flops. That was just some behind-the-scenes information I found out about when it came to Silverado and how it affected Kevin Costner's career. Wow. Thanks, and live long and prosper. By the way, Omar, I love your letters. Don't think it's I true. do One not. One minute he was huge, and then the next he was gone. People, well, that's... Just like that. That's the way of the world, babe. Yeah. Um... Let's see what we have going on here. Uh, let's go back here and, and see what you lovely people are saying. Um, Justin Toner, our, Justin Toner is sending in a tip and he's our moderator. Justin says, hi, Robin Liz. I'd never seen this film before until last night. Now I see why people love it. The all-star cast, great performances, thrilling action, beautiful locations, and excellent Western I will revisit again. Now I need to get the Blu-ray. Cheers. Good luck on the Blu-ray, son. It's hard to get. I've got yeah. the media book, and it's great. <laughs> uh, it's a hard one to get. John, w well, John Wayne is here. <laughs> yeah. John Wayne sent in a super chat. <laughs> As a working ranch cowboy, I love y'all's comments on the westerns y'all are watching. <laughs> Watch El Dorado if you haven't. My favorite John Wayne movie. <laughs> That's from John Wayne. That's a super chat from John Wayne. That is awesome. Uh, Mr. Tickle Trunks here. Mr. Tickle Trunk, how you doing? <laughs> how are you, sir? He sends in a super chat, but doesn't say any. I guess his. It was probably a sticker. It was a stick. Oh, was that a sticker? I didn't say it. It probably was. Oh, uh, well, well, Mr. Tickle Trunk, thank you, sir. <laughs> You're a good cowpoke. Cinema Gulp. Cinema Gulp. Say hello, Cinema Gulp. <laughs> this was my first Western film experience as a kid. Oh. So hop, hop, because you're a high, high, planes, planes, drifter, if you're a Beastie Boys fan. <laughs> uh, Cinema Gulp says, this is my first Western film experience as a kid, though High Plains Drifter is my favorite. Oh, and Elizabeth, you look amazing as always. <laughs> well, thank high you, Plains Cinema Drifter, Gulp. Cinema Gulp, you are correct, because High Plains Drifter kicks ass. Paint the town red and call it hell. Such a good movie. So good. Timbula the Spider Monkey. <laughs> he says, here's some more money. Please no more Australian accent. <laughs> oh, mate, mate, mate. <laughs> thank you, thank no slab of bay bay. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. No, Sorry, it's okay. Dave. Hey, if a, if, a, if, a true, if a true Aussie says that, you know, <laughs> and drinks his Coopers and doesn't drink Victoria Bitter, we can be friends. It's okay. Well, you know... My stepdad is Australian. I know he is, but he doesn't know anything about Australian beer. No, of course not. Um, Trav Hall sends in a tip and says, Hi, Rob. Hi, Ace. Dennehy's greatest role, Tom Callahan and Tommy Boy and Sheriff Teasel in First Blood. And, of course, Detective McCarthy in FX and FX2. <laughs> Thought, thoughts? Miss Liz is lovely as ever. Well, 
Look at you getting all the love from the guys that are trying to hit on you via virtual <laughs> chat here. Um, it's just my fans, babe. It's, it's your fans, you know. Uh, and you should have fans. You are, after all, the arbiter of cinematic excellence and the, the enchantress, enchantress of, of entertainment. entertainment. <laughs> Brian Denny's greatest role. Um, that's a good question. I, I mean, I all of those, all of those are great. Look, he's great in First Blood, no doubt. He's great, but I did like him as the benevolent alien in Cocoon. I don't know if that's his best role, but yeah, Tommy Boy is great. <laughs> Uh, and he's FX is good. He, I mean, he's I, a great I actor. I, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Off the top of my head, yeah. I mean, those are all great. Those are all great. You know, he was also great in Presumed Innocent mm. with Harrison Ford. Uh, I love Brian Dennehy. Me too. I, I, I was lucky to interview, you know, his daughter Elizabeth Dennehy played uh, Shelby in the Best of Both Worlds, a two-part Next Generation episode. Hmm who almost took over the first officer position on the Enterprise. Uh, love Brian Denny. He's so great. That was his daughter. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she's a friend of the Starzix. Oh. Yeah, that's how I was able to call her up and get an interview with her. Oh, very cool. Um, Sheriff Carl sends in a tip and says, I sure do all love, I sure do love all this sheriff talk tonight. <laughs> Who's your favorite sheriff? Sheriff Bart is my personal favorite. He's more of a party sheriff like myself. Party is the law. <laughs> Who's Sheriff Bart? Uh, I don't know right away. It's There's so many sheriffs. So many. Um, sheriff Buford Pusser. The sheriff from Live and Let Die and Mouth Golden Gun. No. My favorite sheriff, probably Gary Cooper in High Noon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean the that's High Noon's one of my favorite movies. It's a western, but it's so why haven't we? Why aren't we doing that? Well, movie? because a sh High Noon is a different kind of a western, really. Different kind of a story. Honestly, I think our viewers choice movie should be The Searchers, but that's just me. It's not up to me. There are just so many westerns. Um. <clears throat> <laughs> Timbalos the Spider Monkey says, sounded like the police officers at the end of Point Break. Also, VB, really? I'm a Cooper's kind of guy. Bruh, so am I. I'm all about Cooper's. I've said it. I hate VB. I didn't even know what it was. The only time I, the only reason I say that is because when I was first in Australia working on uh, um, the Lord of the Rings special features, I went and interviewed Andrew Lesney and I spent time with the amazing. Foley guys, and at the end of the Foley session, that they were saying to me, "This is what they said, mate. We're gonna need a slab of bye bye." That's what they said. I'm like, I don't understand what that is. I understood, mate. Mate, it's a slab of bye bye, mate. I'm like, I don't. What you does know that what mean? You remind me of you remind me of the dentist in Finding Nemo. I didn't know what a slab of beer was. See a man about a uh, uh, wallaby. Well, say yeah. That. Say that. Uh, I'll say a man about a wallaby, mate. <laughs> Ah, I, a slab, for those of you who don't know in Australia, <laughs> a slab is a flat slab of beer that has 24 beers. Oh, my God. That's a slab. That's a lot like of beer. Like, we get half racks, which are six beers, or, you know. <laughs> 20 but we have No, 20, but it's a flat slab. But it's to share. One person couldn't even so, drink 24 well, no, beers. Three people can, because I, I watched it happen. <laughs> So the Foley guys on Lord of the Rings, when they finished, we got a slab of VB. Now, I didn't know what VB was. I'd never been in Australia before. I mean, what did I know of Australian beer? It wasn't until I lived in Australia for a year that I discovered the joy of Cooper's. So let me tell you, Tim, <laughs> Cooper's is my jam. Tubers and Penfolds, man. How much of that did I drink? A lot. Let me tell you, Penfolds is a wine. Okay. I have never been to Australia. Oh, man. I had so much. And Cooper's, I don't know if it's still, does it still come, like, wrapped in plastic? Like, you get six, and it was wrapped in plastic. Like, it was awesome. It was so much fun to tear it open. Anyway. That's wow. It. Anyway. So, Tim, I, too, am a Cooper's kind of guy. Johnny Five. Uh, Johnny Five is alive. Sends in a super chat and says, I love these shows. I recommend Winchester 73 starring Jimmy Stewart. Great twist at the end. That's a great uh. movie. That's a good idea. Uh, I like that movie. Take note. T take note. The Squish Show, trying to butter us up, because you love the Squish Show's movie. 
Remember the Squish show and the. I did, and I think he's the one making me a Z. Is he making you a Z? I think so. He better not let you down. <laughs> Liz needs a Z. Hashtag. Uh, the Squish show says. As a big Waterworld fan, don't diminish Firefox either. It's fantastic. I'm not diminishing Firefox. I think Russian. I love that movie. Firefox. I don't know if I've seen that. And if yeah. you've ever seen it, give Cle uh oh. And if you've never seen it, give Clint Eastwood's film Diablo a watch. I don't think I've seen Diablo. I think I've seen it. I, I don't I have not. Um uh, I have not. I'll check that out. By the way, if you have not seen the Squish Show's film which is part of the Intergalactic Imagination Connoisseurs Film Festival. Look it up. It's pretty damn funny. <laughs> yes. That movie was pretty funny. It's funny. It was pretty funny. My kind of comedy. Your kind of comedy. Michael Preston sends in a super chat and says, I watched Silverado in the theater when it came out, and I found it to be great, especially Brian Dennehy. Love you, Elizabeth. And Rob's okay, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thank you. Elizabeth, she needed to hear this. See? Bolstering your ego today? Don't yeah. you feel better? I had a rough day, so she this, had a rough day. this is very nice. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Uh, Andrew Christie <clears throat> says, I live in West LA, but I'm from Melbourne. I love my vibe. <laughs> Rob, you made me nostalgic for my hometown. Ha <laughs> ha. More terrible Aussie accents, please. <laughs> That's so fun. Well, the dentist from ne Finding Nemo. <laughs> great. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not good with the accents. I'm no actor, as you can tell. I'm no actor. You're great with the accents, I think. I love it. Yeah, but you're not from actually from Australia. It doesn't matter. I just love it. Okay, well, I'll keep doing the accents, lady. <laughs> I don't even know what that accent was. That wasn't Australian. Yeah, sure it was. No. No, it wasn't. Uh, Trev Hall says, and I apologize, another best role query. Kevin Klein. we would especially appreciate Liz's opinion. I love Kevin Klein. I love Kevin Klein. I bet I know what your favorite role is. Yes. A fish called Wanda. Yes. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was a fish called Wanda. How did you know? Because I know. Oh, we've only been together for uh, half a decade. Oh. I love him in A Fish Called Wanda. I think that movie's hilarious. I love that movie. Uh, that movie, A Fish Called Wanda, is great. So do you know? Funny. Do you know who directed that movie? Who? Charles Crichton, like ninety-three-year-old Charles Crichton when he directed it. Wow. And he directed the Space nineteen ninety-nine episode Dragon's Domain. Oh. I know you're going, what? <laughs> oh, see all those okay. eagles up there? <laughs> oh, yeah, they're all the same. They're not all the same. There's more coming. How many, it's great. One. There's more coming? Yeah, they made more. I can't help it. I mean, I you know, it's, what, what do you want me to tell you? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And you have how many more coming? Hmm, uh, that's a good question. Four? But they come with other things. They're all different. They all look the same. They're all different. They look like a bug. The eagle transporters don't look like a bug. They're all different. They look like bugs. They don't look like and bugs. And they all look the same. <clears throat> and I got model kits over there. There's an unbuilt... <coughs> uh. We could be putting some hot toys up there. <clears throat> The Squish Show says Clint Eastwood's son's film is called Diablo. Sorry about that. It's got some pretty cool casting in it as well. I would dig that. I'd watch that. But you said it was Diablo, right? It is Diablo. You said yeah, Diablo. I feel like I've seen it. I um, have to look it up to make sure. Yeah. I, well, I love that Andrew Christie, uh, he's from Melbourne. <laughs> yeah. Just ask. You know what's my favorite thing in Australia to do? What? Okay, there are two things in Australia that I love the most. <laughs> what? One is if you went to a bar and you put on cold chisel on the jukebox. Uh-huh. Just to see what happens. <laughs> what happens? Everybody starts singing. <laughs> like, I had no idea. I never... I knew who... I knew who... Um, um, uh, uh, the lead singer of Cold Chisel was. Why am I drawing a blank on his name? Barnes. Because um, he sang... He was on the Lost Boys soundtrack. And... Um, uh, he sang with Michael Hutchins, but I did not know. Of, I didn't. I'd never heard of the band Cold Chisel, and they're like the Australian 
like uh, uh, the rock, the bar band. They're like Cold Chisels, like the Bruce Springsteen of I don't know. You'll have to tell me if I get this wrong. But all I know is I found out about why am I drawing a why am I drawing a blank on his name? Barnes, uh, Mary, Mary, get on you know, dan, 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 rock, Lost Boys. Why am I why am I draw, anyway? I'm drawing a blank. So I'm in a bar. Uh, with Peter, uh, with with my friend Peter, who I'd met in Australia, and he, and, and he's talking about Cold Chisel. Uh-huh. I'm like, is that a band? What is Cold Chisel? It's a band. He puts on this Cold Chisel song. The entire band, the entire bar starts singing. <laughs> I'm like, this is the most amazing shit ever. Wow. Uh, I keep wanting to say Bucky Barnes, but that's the MCU. That's Captain America. That's the Winter Soldier. That's him. <laughs> that's Bucky Barnes right there. He's right there. <laughs> Bucky Barnes is right there. That's not who I'm talking about. <laughs> but but it, that was an amazing thing. So so there was that. There was that. Whenever these are the things I learned in Australia. You put on ch- cold chisel in a in a in a bar. People will sing. The other thing is, if you ask somebody, do you like Sydney or Melbourne better? What do they say? Oh, it didn't matter. I mean, the, the, the battle lines are drawn. Like they, oh. it was like the Hatfields and the McCoys. It's like New York and L.A. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but 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 and, and yes, but you know what's funny? I think ultimately, as much as I love Sydney. I yeah. love Sydney. You know, I can't speak to Melbourne because I didn't live there. Okay. But I think I'd give it the edge. I'd give Melbourne... From what I heard from people, people who love Melbourne love Melbourne differently than they love Sydney. I think they're very different places. But I've the, never been there, so I, I don't know. I can't. Know. You know, I don't want to... Jimmy you... Barnes! That's Jimmy Barnes! Cold Chisel is totally the Bruce Springsteen of Oz. <laughs> yes! Awesome. Yes, it is, Andrew. I mean, I have to tell you... That was my favorite thing. Like, I had never heard of Cold Chisel. I knew Jimmy Barnes because he was on the Lost Boys soundtrack from that song. When he, te- he sang it with In Excess. And, and I'd never heard it. And when I went to... It was... It didn't, matter, it didn't matter what was going on. You put on a Cold Chisel song and people just started... People in Australia, they like to drink and they sing. Oh, they're not yeah. about. They dance. They sing. They, it's, yeah, it's, it it's, seemed like very happy people. It, I loved Australia. I'd love to go back. I'd give anything. Did to go you back. know? Not only is my stepfather Australian, but I have family. I have cousins in Australia. I have well, an uncle Suzanne and I have cousins. Can we go see Suzanne? Well, yeah, that's on my stepdad's side, but I have actual cousins from oh. my father's side. Oh, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, my uncle John and his three children, Daniel, named after my father, Andrew and Michelle. Well, do they, any of them live in Tamworth? Because I went, I stayed in Tamworth for almost a month. <laughs> no, the um, there's a place in Australia even Australians haven't been to. Um, Although it's a lovely place. What's it? Avon, Avon. What is it called? Avondale, Avon, uh, Avonlea, Avondale, Avondale, Avonlea. Avon, where the dingo got the baby? Uh, you mean uh, Adelaide? Adelaide. Okay. I think that's Avondale. where my Adelaide. Adelaide. Adelaide's like wine country. Oh, well, that's where um, my uncle lives. Adelaide's right. south, I think. It's down. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Swack Prop says, Thanks, Ace, for being the Florence Nightingale to our Duke of Dope Discourse. Aww. Have a speedy recovery, Robin. <laughs> take care of you crazy kids. Oh, yes, you did. I could show it to you. Yeah, I've been, I've been doctoring him. She's his. been doctoring my twisted ankle. Tell him how bad it was. It was bad. It was so... It was like... Three times its normal size. Yeah, it was pretty scary. Yeah, so I've been wrapping it up real tight, and we have a splint on it, and icing it, put lots of um, cream. It's true. Taking Tylenol. Taking Tylenol, but it's getting better. It feels much, much, much better. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess that's it. Like, we're... Uh, <laughs> Timulus says Tamworth is a great place to spend a day, but not much longer. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, when you meet the people at the uh, at the social center and go lawn bowling, I was given a lawn bowl a Tamworth team lawn bowling shirt <laughs> by the locals because I bought them all many, 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 many pitchers of beer. Interesting that our conversation ended up in Australia. <laughs> uh, it was, I don't know why it did, but uh, it, it, it's you know. Um, no, this was this is good. So we're we're so over. We don't know what our next movie is. We don't know what our next movie is, but somebody better tell us by tomorrow. Maybe we'll find Quick, out. Quick, everyone, vote. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, Trav Hall says, "Love both of you guys. 
You're a lucky son of a Rob. You're a lucky son of a Rob. You did okay, Liz. We love you. Well, thanks, Trav Hall. Thank I very much appreciate that. Thank you very much. Mm. So, okay, well, we gotta, we gotta, like, we get down to our, we our, have to do our, our bottoms up. Our bottoms up scale. What is our bottoms up scale, Liz? Do you want to change the camera? Oh, are we back to our changing the camera? Well, yeah. Cause yeah, we're I not guess doing we have to. Super chats anymore? Okay. Um, well, people can send them in if they want. Look, the Richard sent in a super chat. Uh, the Richard says, "I'm loving you guys tonight. Uh, gonna do a the Richards Post Geek Singularity Facebook dance party tonight." We are back and full That's throttle. Awesome. We'll have your next Western request by tomorrow. Oh, good. Be well, Rob. All right. Come um, on, pick something good, people. Yeah, pick the searchers, people. I want to watch the searchers. I love oh, the searchers. There's so many good, like Desperado. I'm not and... gonna watch Desperado. Come on, Desperados. Antonio. That's not a Western. Well, well, kind of is. I, yeah, but that doesn't. Uh, what else? There's so many good ones. Look, all I know is we're watching Young Guns. Unf we're watching Unforgiven, Young Guns. Unforgiven Friday. Yeah, and Tarantino, Western, Django Unchained, hmm. The Hateful Eight. No, 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 no. Country no. for Old Men. Oh, come on, man. All right, these are not. I thought we we're watching classic westerns, exploring they, the genre. Our viewers will pick. Our viewers will pick. But we know that we're watching Unforgiven. Uh, we really should watch Unforgiven last. Okay, we can. But I still want to do True Grit. We're doing both True Grits. Both of them. Yeah, we're doing both True Grits. Which means we should probably watch one tonight. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I have so much stuff I have to do. We can't watch one tonight. Okay, tomorrow night. Um, yeah, so Once Upon a Time in America. You mean Once Upon a Time, Once upon a time in the West. <laughs> Once upon a time in the America is a, is a is a gangster movie, but I have that. Um, so okay, our, our bottoms up scale. What is our bottoms up scale? <laughs> Westworld. It's not even a movie. It is, what? Is it? It's a movie. Oh, I was thinking the show. No, Westworld. Michael Crichton, nineteen seventy three. Sloppy with your drink. This man needs a bib. Black Philip wants Django Unchained. <sighs> so good <laughs> okay it's not up to us so let's get back not, to the, the let's get Just back go to the, vote the, let's get back to the show <laughs> at hand so what is our what is our bottoms up scale our bottoms up is from one to four glasses because there are four glasses of wine in a bottle four glasses of wine in a bottle yep and on a scale of one to four glasses of wine how do you rate silverado <laughs> I really enjoy this film. I'm going to give it three and a half because the score was just too overwhelming. Well, yeah, but I think three and a half is high for this movie. I, I think yeah, you're... Yeah, I mean... No, I think you're I right about that. I between three and three and a half. But, yeah... I no, enjoyed it because it, it's in set in the 80s, and I love the 80s. I grew up in the 80s, and so this no, film I, brings up a lot of nostalgia for me. I thought the acting was great, and I like a good adventure. No, I, I don't disagree with you. I, I, I give this three and a half stars too. I think to me, this is the pinnacle of of studio filmmaking in the mid eighties. Yes. I, I find this movie there's nothing wrong with this movie. It's it's A list all the way. I I it could have been three hours long and it probably should have been. you know, it's funny, I didn't look on the Blu ray to see if there's a lot of deleted scenes. Uh -huh. I would imagine there I'm might sure. be. I'm sure there are. Um, but it, it, I think it moves like a gunshot. It's really well paced. I, I really enjoy the characters. Um, and uh, I, you know, I think it's. Yeah. You can hum it. Yeah, I needed a break from the score. That's all I have to say. All right. Well. Okay then. <laughs> um, a break from the score. Yeah. Well, um, of course, this show wouldn't be possible without our great moderating staff, Mike Bodden, the Richard, and I guess he's going full throttle there at the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page. Go find his dance parties. Uh, you know, I love the uh, actually the watch parties. What I love about Richard is he's always playing this really crazy eclectic stuff, 
And it, it, I'll tell you something. If you're feeling down and Richard's running some kind of a party, it doesn't even matter what he's running. It's something that'll make you smile. It's some yeah. craziness. <laughs> he used to do like Saturday morning ca- cartoons. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was so No, awesome. it's great. You got to go you got to go check that out. Uh it's fantastic. So anybody, you know, go to the if you want to send us letters, you can go to the burnettwork.net website, which is chalk block full of all kinds of content. Uh, three word reviews. You can go there and be interactive and you can comment on people's stuff and send us letters. And we put up most of the letters that we get on that website. So even if I don't read them, Cinema Gulp, I'm not slighting you. I'm not. Um, hopefully your letters are on the website uh, because we, we like that. And um, yeah, so so go there and be interactive and, and that's what we do it for. I mean, how many websites... How many? We have a pretty great website, and for a YouTube channel to have the, I'm not, I'm not boasting because Mike Bodden does it all, but for this kind of a web, uh, uh, YouTube channel to have the website that we have is pretty cool. It's all about interaction with people and talking and and uh, you know, all of those kinds of things. And uh, yeah, we also have the Post Geek Singularity Facebook page. We got the Whining About Movies Facebook page. We have the uh, Fully Articulated Facebook page, and we have the. Um, let's get physical media, another Australian. Uh, we have the let's get physical media Facebook page and we have our favorite German Dieter Bastian. So we're truly international, (laughs) truly international. Um, so there you go. Uh, uh, Trav Hall punch says we need more Rob and Liz more (laughs) the Valley of the Guanji. That's a good one. Um, we're here. We're here. We do three shows. Yeah, three shows a week. And I have to tell you, I got a few things that to finish, but we're going to start our Star Trek show. We are. Yeah. Oh, good. We're going to do our Star Trek show. I have to say, this this term, I am in a sci-fi class. So there are... <laughs> there are movies that we should do for the show because I have to watch them. <laughs> he overheard my class today and... <laughs> I should be teaching it. Just saying. It's okay. I love my teachers. They're, They're great. great. They are great. <laughs> hey, it's all good. Anyway, um, Justin Toner says, I like Valley of the Guanji. I did too. I did too. <laughs> I haven't seen it. So, uh, anyway. so <clears throat> Pick a good movie for us. Pick a good movie for us. We have to know. Tell the Richard. We've got until tomorrow. It'd be nice if we could get it so we could actually watch it tomorrow. He said tomorrow he would have okay, it. Okay, tomorrow us. we'll have it. So, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gentle being, kind souls across the 28 known galaxies, <laughs> we are going to put an end to Elizabeth's 116. What? 116 movies. That's a lot. We've done 116 episodes. You know, we're approaching next, no, no, we're not February. March will be our anniversary. Wow. We have to have an anniversary, uh, our one-year anniversary. Like, we, what are we going to do? Definitely. What yeah. are we going to do? I'll think of something. Or maybe you guys could suggest something. We have to have, like, an epic... It has we to have to have, epic. like, one of our epic shows. Like, like a three-hour show. <laughs> with two bottles of wine? Oh, with, with no, more than that. <laughs> Whiskey and wine. <laughs> no, no, no. I can't do more than that. Okay, but we have to have one of our epic shows. Like, we one do. of our long... It's we like, do. The fact that this show has gone on, we started it for fun to see how it would go, and yeah. it's 116... Well, it should be something fun where we, we rag on something. Because those, no, are, should... the, those are the fun ones. We are not going to rag on things. We don't set out to... Oh. This is not Mystery Science Theater 3000. Yeah, but that show we did on Zardoz and uh, Long Kiss Goodnight... Well, that was pretty fun. That was so uh, fun. The Richard says, going to start <clears throat> original watch parties on the fully articulated Facebook page featuring original stop-motion videos by members. Oh, that'd be cool. Oh, wow. That'd be really cool. I, lo- I love that idea. That's a great So, idea. no, but wh- whatever it's going to be, it's some, I'll have to figure out which, which day in the end of March. I think it's the end of March. Yeah, we have to figure out what what day it is, and we'll do our anniversary <clears throat> show. It'll be, you know, it'll probably have to be like, um, I don't know, something. I don't know what it'll be. Something epic. Something epic. Like we haven't done The Godfather. We could do like Godfather one, two, and three. But we love those movies. Well, so we can still do them. We can still talk about them. That's true. I mean, you never know. One, two, and three. That's a lot. That's a lot to talk about. It is a lot to talk about. But if we're going to do our, our anniversary show, 
I mean, to be doing like a rip with Rob, can you imagine just getting like hammered by the time we got to Godfather 3? Ah, oh, Sophia Coppola! Oh my god. No, it wouldn't be so good. But we'll have to figure that out. We got time. We could do Zardoz again. No, we're not going to do Zardoz again. We've done Zardoz. Look, I, it's your show. If you want to do Zardoz again, who am I to say no? <laughs> peen. Something with peen. Uh, I, 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 the penis is evil. Uh, well, the Zardoz <laughs> has the penis. I mean, you know. Um, anyway, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And on that note, <laughs> our show is over. Should I do the thing? You should do the thing. <laughs> Everyone you meet, <clears throat> excuse me, has a story to tell that you have yet to hear. And all you have to do is... Is listen. listen. <clears throat> and with that, we say to everyone, what? Have a better night. Have a better night. <laughs> I will be back on Rob's Observations tomorrow. Uh, no John Campy show for the rest of the week. So oh. it's it's just me. Right. I should I should poach his entire audience and just start doing shows in the morning. That's right. And call it the not the John Campia show <laughs> with Robert Meyer Burnett. You should totally do that. I'm not gonna do that. No, you don't do that. I won't do that. <laughs> but we will have fully articulated on Wednesday. Nice. With as. Although I'm not gonna get a package delivered to me. Like I did last week. <laughs> here you're coming outside. Look, here you got a package. Oh, it's Thanos. <laughs> Hi, Thanos. <laughs> Thanos is here. Anyway, why don't you take us out? Have a better night. Have a better night. Mm, see you on Wednesday. See you on, or see you next Wednesday, as John Landis would say. 